Hello and welcome. This is Bobby at the Paper Jungle and today I am sharing a different type of video than what you normally see me do. I have made these belly bands out of scraps and I just love them. They were inspired by Melina Pilot over at MS Scrap Busters and I'll put a link in the description box so you can go over and check out her projects. She does such amazing work and she just has tons of projects uh, sharing ideas how to use up your scraps. And I don't like to throw away anything, so this worked perfectly for me. So I have made these four belly bands, and they are on a tracing paper background. But they are so pretty. And these flowers, I have a video on how I created those, and I'll put a link on those as well in the description box. This one I added a tab to, and used one of the little charms that I had in my stash. This one, I used another one of the flowers and some scraps. This is a um, Elizabeth Craft Design stamp, and um, just the shape is from Elizabeth Craft Designs. The Agent 1929 is a Tim Holtz stamp. And this one is all in blues, and I added a little washi tape at the top and the bottom. This one is, these are all scraps left over from uh, other projects, um, albums or folios that I've made in the past. And this one is uh, floral as well, all, mostly greens and darker colors. And I have a, a couple more that I made. This one I added a little tag to. I need to put a, a pop dot or something on the top of that little tag. Uh, I added some greenery that I colored here and here, and I left it where you can see the tracing paper and just stamped on it. And I believe Melina said hers were inspired by Roxy's creations, and I'll try to put a link to hers. Although I have not watched hers, I think that's who Melina said uh, inspired her, and I'll try to find that and put a link in the description box for her as well, so you can check that out. And then here's the sixth one I made. Again, all scraps left from folders, folios, albums, what have you, that I've done in the past. And then that inspired me to use another scrap I had and make this envelope. And I have, have I glued it together? Yes, I did. It's just a little envelope. And my punch stuck when I cut out this uh, notch. So I had to trim it out with scissors and still got a little bit of a crimp there, but it kind of makes it look more aged, so I just left it that way. But these are just scraps from older collections. This is a um, Tracy Fox label that I stamped on with a Tim Holtz stamp. This, I believe, it's either Tim Holtz, the butterfly is either Tim Holtz or um, Simple Stories. I'm not sure which it is. And this little bee, I think it came out of a collection that I had. And then I just inked around the edges with some distress stain and I splattered with a little black and white acrylic paint. And that's all there is to it. They go so fast. They're really fun to make. So what I thought I would do was make two or three more with you. And I'm just using tracing paper. And I've got some strips cut out here that are two inches wide. I think this, yeah, this is two pieces. Let me get out my silicone mat because when I glue things down, it won't stick to the silicone. So here we go. Let's put this out here. Make sure I'm in frame so that you can see what I'm doing. And I want to get some of these strips out. Now they're gonna look blue because this silicone mat is blue, but they're they're not gonna be that color. Although I'm going to use a design paper that's got some blue in it this time. And here's the third one. And I've got a couple more leaves laying out here that this is a Tim Holtz die, and I cut it out of a green cardstock, and then I just inked on it. Because, you know, when you see leaves in, um, 
in nature they're not all one color they have varied colors in them so I just dab some different colors on them and that's all I did with those so let me lay all of this out of my way here and I just want to take some scraps let me see what I've got here that we can use. See what we can come up with to use up these smaller pieces. bigger pieces out of the mix for now. See if we can't use the smaller ones up, which is the idea of this. So what I want to do first is, um, I know that Melina stamped on hers after the fact. I'm going to stamp first, and then I may do some additional stamping after. But I've got this huge stamp. It's an old Stampin' Up stamp, and it doesn't have a name on it. It's a French script print, and I don't want it to be real dark, so I'm going to use frayed burlap. And these silicone mats wipe off so easy, so I'm just going to start up off the edge of it stamp down. Let me move this one over so I don't overlap. And that's enough. I just want it to be very faint in the background so that it's not naked, so to speak. And then let's do this one. just want some background in it is all. to the ink off of it. So it'll be somewhat clean when I put it away. This one is well loved. I've used it for years. I don't even know if it has a name to it. Okay. Let me see. I'll look on the box and see if it has a name. It might be something you can find on eBay or somewhere. Oh, here's the name of it, and I don't know how you pronounce it, it's French. It's capital E-N, capital F-R-A-N-C-A-I-S. In Francis, I don't know, I'm probably butchering that up, but you know, there you go. Okay, so we're going to take these little pieces. kind 
of dusty. I haven't used it for a while. Let me wipe it off of here. I might have to change the blade in it. It's been so long since I've used this when I've been making most larger projects. going to cut mine. I want straight edges on this one. So, and I do want to ink them. I just like the ink. This is still damp. Let me fan that a little bit and dry it out. this at one inch. By about two. And yeah, two and a half. And I want to ink it. And I think I'll do gather twigs for the inking. Be a little bit darker in the background. just a little bit and just cut a piece off of here I don't want all the shapes to be exactly the same. I'm going to ink the circle. And I'm just going to kind of lay them out until I like them. And let's take a piece of this. I'll make this two inches so it'll go across side to side. I've got tons of scraps. Tons of scraps. I'll lap that a little bit. And what else we got? of this yellow. Let's do a hexagon shape. Oops. Hang in there. 
this pouch. Now I think I need maybe a label. those two and I'm going to glue those in place. Okay, I have cut and inked some more pieces to put on these other two. This one I had this paper with some pink floral in it so I thought I would kind of focus around that. So this is a Tim Holtz um, collage tile, he called it. And I'm going to glue that up at the top. Over to the side. I can slide it. Yeah, almost. This, I believe, is a sticker. I did a couple projects for a lady a while back that um, wanted me to do uh, a couple journals for her. I don't know if I can get this to come off or not. I think it's a sticker. If I can get it to separate. There we go. This is a stamp. It has a pink flower on it. going to overlap it with that one and let it partially hang off the edge and I'll cut that off later. Oh, and I wanted to show you too, when you glue on these uh, silicone mats, they don't stick. That's the beauty of those. And that is crooked for sure. Let's see if I can straighten it up without messing it up too much. I'm not very good at straightening. Still don't have it straight. There, I think that'll be better. Yes, that looks better. Okay. Now for this one, I'm just going to wrap it around since it's sticky on both sides. It's not going to show from the back because it's going to be a belly band. And then, I think I want this piece. This is from the same paper collection with the little roses on it. This one I used a punch, this punch here that does like a notebook edge, and I had this little brown piece left over and I thought that would be cool. Glue it along the edge of this. Soak up some of that glue. I want to put down here. It's another one of those collage tiles. And I'm going to put it sideways. I think everything doesn't need to go straight. So if 
will be underneath what's down below. number to be on here as well. Oops. Put it sideways. I want this down at the bottom. This is all about layers. That one here. And then this is the definition of the word botanical. And I'm not sure where it came from. It may have been from Timo, that may have been from Tracy Fox, I'm not really sure. And I'm going to overlap it here and let it kind of hang off the edge. This says, so red the rose, and it was the bottom of a tag. Had some more stuff on it, but I thought that was appropriate for this. And I'm going to put it right here. So that will take care of that one. Now if I want, I could add one of these sprigs of leaves down here. Or I could put it up here. I really like it down here. Uh, I'm thinking about it. But I want to stamp on it before I add anything else. So now on this one. Let's lay this one aside. Oh, I did add a piece of that brown here. I just thought that was too cute to waste. And then I have this bee. I want to stamp on this before I put the bee down. I just found him floating on my desk. And I thought he'd be appropriate up here. But I want to stamp under that first. So let's go over to this one. And this is a paper that had to do all about coffee. And I'm making one journal for my daughter who is an avid coffee drinker. So I thought this would be a perfect belly band for hers. So I'm going to put this over here to the side. And here's that punched piece I told you about. Put a little dot of glue on each one of these tabs so they don't get torn off. that says coffee off the same paper collection. also had a little bit of blue in it, but it was mostly greens and browns. So I want to put this up under that edge. Bring it right down off the end. And then I like this here. 
it's a stripe that was in the collection. And I had already torn it for something else, and I thought, what the heck, I'll just leave a torn edge on it. It kind of cool, really. So I'm going to let it overlap where the other one is torn. And I'll just cut that off. And then I have this circle. And I'm going to glue it to this other circle just for strength. It'll give a little dark border to it. says term strictly cash. Mm -hmm. this one, but maybe not. I might not use that one yet. And I do want to put a tab up here on this one. So I'm going to fold this in half. I did remember to ink this one. I found a little teapot and a spoon I can dangle from this one.
me see what color we got. I don't have a dark brown. laid off my die cutter. This is, there's a dark brown. We use that one. It's actually more gold than dark brown and it's kind of a tight fit. Let's see if I can stretch it a little bit. stuff and places to put things. Alright, now we can trim these off. From the back side is my how I normally did it. I can see the edge at the back better. So we're going to trim. Actually, I don't want to trim the die cut. too much stuff out on my desk then I can't hardly work. Okay, let's use the walnut stain. And I want to ink around the edges and it's easier when you have something lightweight like this to ink your edges if you hold it onto a piece of chipboard. And I learned that somewhere, I think, Gail Agostinelli. I'm not sure, but I think that's where I saw that tri that tip. There's so many talented people making videos, and it's hard to remember where you see everything. Whoops. There's that one inked. Now I want to stamp on this before I cut it. Well, it doesn't really make any difference. Let me go ahead and cut it so I can ink it. Because whatever stamps over there is going to get cut off anyhow. So it doesn't really make any difference. So we'll put this up to the edge.
fell off. Oh man, I've got to move this. It's driving me crazy. It keeps sticking to my arm. Goodness. stamping, I have this little stamp set, and it's a generic stamp set, I'll tell you the truth, I don't know where I got it, but it's just got some text on it, and walnut stain again, and I'm just going to put a little on this green. check here. some background and a little more texture to it. is. Um, let me put the dangle on this one. A teapot and a spoon. And let me give you an idea of what to do with these. Page edge. Hold on one minute. I gotta get that phone. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> Heard the phone ring and I thought it would be my daughter and I didn't want to miss her call because if I don't answer she'll think something's wrong and worry her to death. But what I wanted to show you is this is not a page I'd be using with this, but you can put it on the outside edge of a page and let this dangle hang off. If you don't need all of this, just trim off what you don't need. Or you can put it on the inside of a page, like this, and glue it bottom side and top, and that way it becomes a tuck spot and you still have your dangle here. So you can do that with all of these. 
here's another one. You can put it down the center of a page and have a tuck spot. And then here's the third one we did today. So in total I've made nine of these. And then this little envelope that I shared with you. Now if you want to put a focal point on these, this one I'm going to leave as is because it has the dangle and the tab. This one I do want to add the B to it. I think he'll be cute with that stamping behind him. And I'm just going to put him down over to the side a little bit so the stamping shows. That was an extra. And on this one, let me find my flowers I made. Maybe I've got one that would work on that. That one is pinks and greens. Here I've got a little pink daisy that I colored. some greenery that will go with it. I could put this pink daisy on there and find some greenery that I like with it. I roll them up in little wax paper pieces so they don't stick together. This one's kind of dark like that one. This one is too. One of these two should work. I can cut it off wherever for whatever part I don't need. greenery down and put the daisy on there. And this one's a little bit lighter. Yeah, I like that one better. It shows up more. And we can stick the daisy behind it a little bit. Ooh, I like that. Okay, I'm going to go with that one. Let me roll this back up. It just keeps them from sticking together and getting all tangled up and tearing the, the edges of the foliage. I just roll them up and put a little paper clip over them and stick them in a container and they stay nice and neat that way. Okay, so let's glue that down. And then we're done. stand out. And like I said before, I'll put a link in the description box so you can see uh, the video on making these flowers. They're really easy to make and these are Tim Holtz dies. Really easy to do. I make a bunch of them at a time. Once they're dry, I just roll them up in those pieces of wax paper to keep them nice. There we go. And then, down good and then I want a piece of tape and I have a piece over here somewhere. Let me find that tape I made. Oh there it is. This is just scotch tape that I colored with alcohol ink and I just want to cut off a little piece of it. like antique tape. I get a 
it off there. There we go. We'll tape it right across the stem so it looks like a botanical sample. There we go. And we're done. Got three more to add. Sorry about that. Had to do a battery change. So that concludes this video. These three are done. I hope you've enjoyed it and I've inspired you to make some of your own. Um, I hope that you'll come back often. I have a lot more planned for you. So if you haven't subscribed, that would be appreciated and I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.